Have you ever wondered how you can turn any text into images with stable diffusion? To create logos or background images? It's actually super easy and I'm going to show you how it's done. First, we'll need to prepare our input text. We'll then turn the text into an image with stable diffusion. So you need to have Automatic 1111 .11 and ControlNet installed already. And if we need to, we'll then fix and improve the images. Since we need our input text to be in an image and we actually want to create two variants of it, we'll use any tool for presentations such as PowerPoint, Keynote, or any other tool. And we'll take a blank slide, enter our text, set the position, the size, and the font that we like. And then we duplicate that slide and we want the text to only show the outline. So we highlight everything, go to shape format, set the text fill to white, so the text disappears, and we set the text outline to black, and we change the width of the outline to three. Now we change the slide size to squared or four by three. So now that's done. We can export those two slides as images. For the second step, We'll launch our Stable Diffusion web interface, navigate to our image that we just created, and we drag it into ControlNet. We set the control type to line art, which also changes the model and the preprocessor accordingly. We enable ControlNet and set it to be pixel perfect. For the prompts, I am using LoRa models. LoRa's are basically small Stable Diffusion models that need to be activated and triggered via the prompt. And you can see below generate, there's another button which lists you all the LoRa's that you have installed. You just click on the LoRa and it adds the activation to the prompt. But you also need to know the trigger word, which is usually in the description of the LoRa. So in our case, we add the word logo. When we click on generate, we get a nice picture with a typo, but that's actually not a big deal since we can fix that easily afterwards. There's two preprocessors that can be used to turn text into an image, but how well they work depends on our input text, which is the reason why we created two input images. And here's a quick comparison how both preprocessors perform with our images with the input text. Here you can see our input image with the outlined text, and it works very well with both preprocessors. The input image with the regular fill text, on the other hand, does not work well with the invert preprocessor, but somewhat works with the line art preprocessor. There's some errors, but nothing major. So, as a quick overview, you should not use the preprocessor invert for the regular text, but it will work nicely on the outline text. So just do a bit of experimenting and you'll probably find a good result for your input text. Or if you don't feel like experimenting, just use the outline text only. And no matter which preprocessor you use, you'll be able to generate some good text on the images. If you think that the pictures you're getting are too boring, then you can try to generate more artistic looking logos by increasing the starting control step slightly and by slightly decreasing the ending control step. And if the text does not come through well enough, you need to increase the control weight. So as an inspiration for you, here's some logos that I created with the various checkpoints and LoRa's. Here I'm using the He-Man and 3DMM LoRa, which I thought gave some really nice images. Here's the Instant Photo and 3DMM LoRa combined, which also works very well. Again, depending on the checkpoint, you will get different results with the same LoRa's. So it's actually quite fun to play around and mix things up. If you want to create something else than just logos, you can also create, for example, banner images that are on widescreen. So you only need to change the width and click on generate and you get some widescreen images.
Here I'm using Ref Animated and Realistic Vision with the He-Man and the 3DM LoRa, which I thought looks really nice. Here's the Edge of Realism checkpoint combined with the Overgrown City LoRa, which always gives some interesting results. Here's some colorful images created with the Ref Animated checkpoint and without any LoRa's at all. Here I'm trying the Gelato style with the Edge of Realism checkpoint. Took me a while to get some results that have good text on it, but it also works as you can see. This example shows that you can even combine more than two LoRa's. Here I'm combining the Overgrown, the Add Detail, and the Neon Laser LoRa. Again, some really interesting results. Not all of them are usable, but a good amount of them are. For the third and final step, we'll have a look at how we can improve images, fixing bad spots that you'll definitely encounter along the way. And with an app such as Photomator or Snapseed, it's really easy since you just need to select the right tool. It's usually the healing tool and you just draw over the parts in the image that you want to remove and let the tool do its magic. And we're done with this image. Here we are fixing a typo with Procreate on iPad. But since we're just cutting and pasting parts of the image, there are many apps that do the same. And that's basically it. We look for a part that is similar to the one we need, duplicate it, and then we put it in the right place. Since you might need a logo without text, for example, for a small preview image where the text cannot be read anyway, I'll show you how you can remove the text from a logo. We do so by inpainting. So we drag our logo into inpainting and create a mask. With that mask, we generate some images with the same prompt or a similar prompt. And as you can see, we get some text tree logos right away. And obviously you can do the same kind of fixes that we just did in the other tool in, in painting as well. And this concludes the tutorial. I wasn't aware that it's that easy to get text into logos and images in Stable Diffusion. There might be a better way soon, but until then, I think this works really well. I hope you learned something new today. If you did, please give me a like or subscribe. And in case you didn't know, this isn't my real voice. I have a video on how I trained and used that AI voice. So please check it out and I'll see you next time.